Wakeley, Massachusetts, founded in 1718 by the Reverend Nathaniel B. Wakeley. Today, almost two and a half centuries later, most of Wakeley's inhabitants still adhere to the rigid Puritan laws that were laid down by their ancestral forefathers. The one characteristic that must always prevail is modesty. In 1802, the population was 800. Today, it is still 800, which only goes to prove that you can overdo a good thing. This is Clarence Bivens, the town sexton and jack of all trades. Clarence's job would be a happy one if it weren't for one thing. Chestnuts. Of course, this job doesn't pay much, but at least it's steady. Furthermore, Clarence has a sideline, and he does quite well with it, especially in the summer, when hundreds of tourists visit Wakeley to gaze in awe at its historic shrines and to read with reverence its many historic markers. Looks like you have some customers, Clarence. Over at the church. Thanks. You're welcome. Seems like the Wakeley family did just about everything in this town. Morning, folks. Well, good morning. morning. Hi, Bimo. I'm glad to show you around. Oh, how nice. Well, that's very kind, but we don't want to trouble you. Oh, it's no trouble at all. Shall we start here with the church? That'll be fine. The uh, original church was built on this exact spot by its first minister, Nathaniel B. Wakeley. He was the founder of the town of Wakeley. Directly ahead is his uh, original pulpit. Nathaniel B. Wakeley I, he had two children, a daughter, Catherine, and a son named after his father, Nathaniel. Nathaniel B. Wakeley II, he was among the gallant Minutemen who rose up against the tyranny of the English king, George III. It was he who, during the battles of Lexington and Concord, stole through the English line. Mr. Dillaway, another payment on account. Coming right up. Oh, <laughs> I timed it right this time, eh, Mr. Van Harden? Ah, oh, you bet you did. Thanks. You know, I don't mind admitting. Looks like I made a pretty good trade. Ah, then you like my little contribution to the general decor of the town of Wakeley. Well, I guess I do. Do you approve of that bold neoclassic motif? Yeah, sure. Composition satisfactory? Very fine. What about the perspective? Mm, they're pretty good, too. Oh, uh, fine. Then I don't mind admitting I made a pretty good trade, too. I shall now dispose of a little of my salary. Salute. Good morning, Mr. Dillaway. Oh, good morning, Miss Katie. Isn't this a fine day? Yes, indeed, Miss Katie. Very fine. Oh! I'm very sorry. Look what you've done. You ruined my hat. I said I was sorry. I was painting a sign. This happens to be a hat, not a sign. Well, that's open for discussion. Oh, oh wait a minute, wait a minute. I'll fix it up for you. As good as new. Hold that. Now look at it. Not as good as new? Don't you worry. With a few deft strokes of the brush, you'll see. In just a few moments, we'll transform this ugly smear into one of the most beautifully hand-painted originals you've ever seen. Ah, uh, there we are. Look at that smile. We'll call her Mona Lisa. And who knows, a hundred years from now, it might Mr. be... Mr. Dillaway? Uh, coming, Miss Katie. Just look at this. Mr. Dillaway, I was under the impression that you could only sell intoxicating liquors on your premises. Oh, I wasn't selling, Miss Katie. You see, we made a deal. This gentleman promised to paint me a new sign for a dozen bottles of ale. Well, it looks as though you must have paid the gentleman in advance. Who is that? That's Miss Catherine Standish, niece of Priscilla Wakeley, who runs this town. And am I going to hear from her? Mr. Dillaway, if you were I, how would you go about apologizing to the young lady? If I were you, I wouldn't. I'd get the first train out of town. And if I didn't feel like getting the first train out of town, where would I go to apologize? Well, Miss Katie is a town librarian. Oh, is that so? Mr. Dillaway, I have a feeling I'm going to catch up on my reading. Well, it looks like every son in the Wakeley family followed in their father's footsteps and became clergymen, huh? Well, uh, all but the present one. What happened to him? I'm afraid his father had him by the hand while the devil had him by the coattails. It seems that N.B. the Sixth wouldn't take up to ministry, but became a New York lawyer. I don't see anything so scandalous about that. Not if you keep your nose in the law books and stick to lawyering. But Nathaniel, he didn't do that. No? No. He 
It's said that he got to run around with one of them, uh, you pardon the word, hot cetaces. She was a cabaret singer in a cabaret. His picture was in the paper, drinking champagne out of this hot seat. Oh, pardon the word again, huh? Hot seat slipper. Yeah. Wine, women, and song were the ruination of Nathaniel B. Of course, he's over 60 now, and he's only interested in singing and drinking. But a couple of years back, he... That's Miss Catherine Standish practicing next Sunday's hymn. Now, if I'll show you our cemetery, you'll find some very interesting epitaphs on the tombstone. Some of them are real cheery-like. Stephen? Stephen Goodrich. May I see what you've been reading, please? Rocket Reagan in the 31st century. Oh, Stephen, how can you read this sort of trash? That's very scientific stuff. Scientific. You're coming to the library with me. Yes, sir. You may go to lunch now, Mr. Pritchard. Thank you, Miss Standish. With so many worthwhile books in the world, Stephen, I don't know why you'd ever choose a comic book. Turn your head, please, Stephen. Yes, sir. <whistles> Stephen Goodrich, I'm surprised. Hi. Now, this is the type of literature a young man should read. The story of King Arthur. Sounds awful dull. It is dull. Is there something I can do for you? Yes, sir. Uh, is this a library? Obviously. You do lend books? Naturally. Then I'd like to borrow one. Will you just look around and I'll be with you in a moment. Thank you. Stephen, the story of King Arthur happens to be one of the best narrative novels ever written. It's very interesting. Corny. It's a literary classic filled with fine, wholesome characters. And yet you're going to find it just as exciting as your comic books. I doubt it. As a matter of fact, Stephen, the young lady is right. This is a humdinger of a book. Would you mind if I uh, told him a little bit about the story, just to get him interested? Why, no. Thank you. Well, son, this King Arthur, he was a very social sort of guy. He lived in a little town called Camelot. He had about a hundred men. Oh, and they were nice, wholesome characters who spent all their time at a big round table, eating, drinking, drinking and eating. They never did a lick of work. Now, when they got bored at sitting at this big round table, they'd tie a lady's garter around their sleeve and go out looking for trouble. And if they couldn't find trouble, they'd scare some up. They'd uh, look for a stranger, a guy who was minding his own business. And if they were bigger and stronger than the stranger, you know what these fine, wholesome characters would do? They'd pick a fight and beat his brains out. Now, while King Arthur is roaming around the country, hacking people to bits with his trusty sword, back in Camelot, his loving wife, Lady Guinevere, and his best friend, Sir Lancelot... Now, just a minute. Would you give me that book, please? Well, what's the matter? Didn't I tell it right? Go on, mister. It sounds super. Just what is it you want? Well, to be honest with you, I didn't come for a book. I want to apologize for my clumsiness this morning. I hope this makes up for it. Don't you like it? Well, it, it's very pretty, but people in Wakely aren't in the habit of accepting presents from strangers. But I'm not a stranger. I'm the guy who dropped paint on your hat. <laughs> Stephen, I thought that was funny. Thanks. We're going to be friends. And I hope we are, too. Good day. But the hat. Will look very becoming, believe me. Is 
say this guy, Sir Lancelot, was dynamite. You take the book and run along home, Stephen. Yes, ma'am. It must be interesting, Steve. It is, Mr. Wakeley. It's a literary classic. Good. That's the kind of hat to wear, Katie. Uncle Nathaniel. Hello. Oh, why did you take it off? It looks lovely. I bet it didn't look half as lovely in the shop window. You looked as if you just stepped out of a picture. A very pretty picture. All right. How much is it this time? Oh, yes. Uh, Hmm? Three dollars. I gotta do a little research. With Mr. Dillaway at the White Horse Inn, I suppose. Oh no, no, no. This is legal research. I've gotta I've gotta buy a copy of the Massachusetts Fish and Game Laws. Oh. Well, we just happen to have a copy of it here, Uncle. Came in last week. Oh, eh. Uh, is it an early or late edition? The very latest. Too bad. I can't use it. I've gotta have an old one. Oh. Well, in that case... I hope you realize it's very embarrassing for me, Katie. Library, have you seen your Uncle Nathaniel this morning, Catherine? Have I seen Uncle Nathaniel this morning, Aunt Priscilla? Uh, did you try his office? He's not in his office. Never is. Well, when you see him, give him this message. Yes, Aunt Priscilla. Yes, Aunt Priscilla. And if he's not home on time, he'll eat in the kitchen. Yes, Aunt Priscilla. What did you want? She says you'd better be home in time for supper. Yes, Aunt Priscilla. <laughs> she was very insistent. Reverend Turner's coming over. Oh, gosh, she dined at our house twice this week. Hasn't that perfect pounder got anywhere else to go? Oh, Uncle. Well, he is. I've never known a man deliver such physical sermons in my life, and all of them as dry as a... B well, <clears throat> I think I better get along to the bookstore. Uncle, don't forget to choose some clothes after you finish your research. Oh, oh that's silly. That's really... <laughs> No bath comes at home? Go away. License to fish. Where's yours to swim? I don't need one. Well, go ahead and swim. I'm not stopping you. Look, this stream runs for miles and miles. Why do you have to choose this particular spot? Well, it's such a pleasant place that the trout picked it too. If you won't leave, there's only one thing for me to do. Wait! as good as the first time. You know, they tell me that in the South Seas, there are native boys that... I'm not interested in the native boys. Oh, really? Good. I'm glad to hear that. There's nothing I like better than a clear field. Won't you please go away? I can't stay in here all day. Shh. 
You're making so much racket, how do you expect me to catch any fish? Look, I've got a lot of books to deliver. People will be waiting for them. Okay. But never let it be said that Peter Van Arden stood in the way of educational progress. I leave you, young lady, with a sincere hope that I'll be seeing more of you. Why, of all that? Beautiful. Thank you, sir. Lover of fine art, I see. Oh, lover of fine horses. That's a mighty fine-looking animal. Uh, Duchess Lace. She was pretty good in her day. With that chest and those legs, I'd say she was built for distance. Oh, right you are, sir. At anything over a mile, there weren't many that could touch her. To Delaware. Salary time. Beat you to it. Good morning, Nathaniel. Morning, Jim. Here you are, Peter. Paid in full. Thank you, Mr. Dillaway. We broke even. Your sign is finished. Oh, that's first class. And so is this. I was just coming in to see you, James. Hey, he's quite a sign painter. Sign painter? That's Peter Van Arden, one of the greatest commercial artists in the country. He gets $2,000 for a painting like that. $2,000? And what do you think he's charging me, Nathaniel? 12 bottles of ale. <laughs> What's he doing out here, on a vacation? Yep. Trout fishing and American history are his hobbies. He knows more about New England history than any man I've ever met. It's pretty interesting. I have my usual, James. Uh, Nathaniel, you know what I told you? Oh, yes, of course, I forgot. Uh, there is a small balance to my account, isn't there? Uh, after three dollars or something. Exactly. Yes, one, two, three. <clears throat> I think that reestablishes my credit. Oh, there's some very nice people in this town. I started to put the ladder away, and some chap volunteered to do it for me. He's putting it in the garage. Good. Oh, Mr. Van Arden, I want you to meet a very dear friend of mine, Nathaniel B. Wakely. See, you'd be uh, Nathaniel B. Wakely, the sixth born, 1884. Right. <laughs> Could you join me, Mr. Van Arden? Delighted. What'll it be, Peter? Uh, make it a vodka gimlet. You ever try one, Mr. Wakely? Never heard of it. Oh, they're good for what ails you. Good for what ails you. All right. Well, forget the usual, James. Make it two. Put that stuff in the garage. Mighty tough job it was, too. Especially on a hot day like this. Kid, join us for a drink? Oh, now you don't have to do that. Oh. Uh, hello, Nathaniel. Hello. Didn't expect to find you here. Come to think of it, I didn't expect to be here myself. You see, I was coming down the street, and this young man, he was struggling with a ladder. All right, all right. You didn't see me, I didn't see you. No. I don't think it's necessary to ask if you two know each other. You are, Peter. Thank you. What do you call that? That, my friend, is a gimlet. A gimlet? Mm-hmm. Go ahead and drink hearty. Don't wait for me. Uh, Mr. Dillaway, another one. Coming up. Ain't much kick to it, is it? Hmm. I've tasted cheeses that were stronger. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jeremy, sweet Jeremy, the days may come, the days may go, but still the hands of memory clean, the blissful dream of long ago. <laughs> <laughs> You're in great voice today, Clarence. <laughs> they tell me I'm quite a crooner when I get going. <laughs> and speaking of going, I better. Well, now remember, we haven't seen each other. Okay. Why well, then, eh? Take care of yourself, Pete. And thanks for the gimlets. You're very welcome, Clarence. <laughs> is painting oh, horses your specialty, Peter? <laughs> no, but painting fillies is. <laughs> What's the difference? Show Nathaniel our collection, would you, Mr. Dillaway? Have you a collection? Yes, and a very complete one, too. Complete in every detail. <laughs> oh. Ah, yes. Now I see the difference. Uh, you like that, eh, Nathaniel? Oh, it's beautiful. It's simply beautiful. Peter, my boy, you have a soul. You keep that, Nathaniel. I'll give Mr. Dillaway another one. Thank you very much, Peter. You better keep it under lock and key, though, Nathaniel. Remember your sister Priscilla. Oh, Peter, there's nothing in this world like a beautiful woman. And this is a beautiful horse. <laughs> when I was younger, I was an authority on both. <laughs> oh, really? Well, tell me. 
What do you think of these two babies? Babies? Oh. <laughs> Are these yours? They will be. I'm driving down to get their papers tomorrow. Look, why don't you come with me? I'd love to. They're at a farm near Narragansett. I could pick you up around 9 o'clock in the morning. We drive down. Then in the afternoon, we go to the track and catch a couple of races. Wonderful. That's a date. Anybody will tell you where I live. <coughs> uh, oh, Peter. When you come, if by any chance you should meet my sister and my niece, don't tell them where we're going. They don't share our enthusiasm for the finer things of life. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Dillaway, two more gimlets. That was delicious, Priscilla. Nothing like a home-cooked meal, I always say. It's a pleasure to be here. Now, you should come more often, Reverend. We hardly ever see you. <laughs> Perhaps Miss Catherine will play us a few of her compositions. To me, they're always the best part of the evening. Thank you, Reverend. Simply lovely. Thank you. Catherine, my dear, I don't know why you don't try to have that one published. Oh, that's very nice, but I don't think it's that good, Reverend. <laughs> Daniel, were you expecting anyone? Yeah. But not tonight. Evening, Abigail. Miss Priscilla home? Yes, Mr. Grumby. She's in the parlor. Frankly, Reverend, I've never approved of Catherine's commercializing her talent. Good evening, Priscilla. Oh, good evening. Sorry, Priscilla, I didn't know you were entertaining. Reverend, Mr. Grumby, Catherine, Nathaniel. Uh, I can't stay but a minute. I'm away to the depot. Catherine, you'll never guess what. Got a big surprise. I know, Mr. Grumby. Your son, Stuart, is coming home. Why, the sly young devil. I beg pardon, Reverend. He's been writing to you, hasn't he? Well, once or twice. Rather encouraging, wouldn't you say, Catherine? Yes, isn't it? Too bad you can only stay for a minute, Mel. Uh, oh, oh, yes. I just dropped in to tell you that I had a call from the contractor in Thornton just before I closed my bank. Mm -hmm. His specifications are ready for the church repairs. Good. What about the loan? If the specifications meet with my approval, I'll lend the church enough to cover the repairs. That's very generous of you, Mr. Grumby. Mm, very. Only 4%. He charges everyone else 6 I'm afraid I'm one banker who lets a little sentiment interfere with business. I'm driving down to Thornton in the morning to make the down payment. I'd like Nathaniel along to check the contract. Tomorrow? He'll be ready to go with you whenever it's convenient. Fine. Now, if you'll excuse me, we mustn't keep Stuart waiting, must we, Catherine? No, we mustn't. Good night. Good night. Oh, why did you tell him I'd go? I have an appointment tomorrow. What kind of appointment? I'm going out of town with uh, an important client. What important client? <laughs> Just about the most important commercial artist in the country, uh, Mr. Van Arden. Never heard of him. Not Peter Van Arden. Yeah, see? Katie's heard of him. I certainly have. Uncle Nathaniel, what kind of business could you possibly have with a man like that? Uh, well, uh, <clears throat> tomorrow we're, we're going out to his farm to, uh, to have a look at a couple of his babies. That can wait. Oh, no, it can't. Tomorrow's the last day he can get the papers to prove that they're legally his. Perhaps this is in my department, Nathaniel. Oh, well, uh, this is a lawyer's matter. But where's their mother? Hmm? Uh, oh, uh, uh, one of them's in Kentucky. He shipped the other one out to the West Coast. 
Each has a different mother. Nathaniel, this is my department. <laughs> now, now, Reverend, it's not for us to judge. You say that yourself. Nathaniel, I forbid you to have any business dealings with a man like that. But, Priscilla, you know what artists are. What we think is all wrong is perfectly acceptable to them. Besides, like a minister, a lawyer's duty is to bring these poor unfortunate people back to the fold. He's right, Priscilla. Your attitude is most commendable, Nathaniel. I may base my sermon on this next Sunday. Well, if you think it's all right, Reverend, I'd better leave word at Mr. Grumby's house that you won't be able to make it tomorrow. I think I have his telephone number in my desk. Uncle Nathaniel, after what I've seen and heard of this Peter Van Arden, you're just wasting your sympathy. Why, any man who could do what he's done. Oh! Oh! Reverend, go and get some water. Katie, call Abby here. Gosh. It's a good thing she didn't get a look at you lie. Uncle Nathaniel? He's here. Oh, well, Kitty, please go tell him I'll be right there. I don't want to keep an important gentleman like Mr. Van Arden waiting. Gentleman? After what he's done? Oh. Sending one mother to Kentucky and shipping that other poor unfortunate girl out to the West Coast. Ah, oh, good morning. My uncle will be out in a moment. Oh, there's no hurry now that you're here. And next time, if there is a next time, please try to make less noise. This is not only a respectable neighborhood, but my aunt is still in bed, thanks to you. No, thanks to me. I don't even know your aunt. Those horrible pictures. Oh, don't tell me she found your uncle's calendar. I'd expect a man of your type to find it amusing. You know, a hundred years ago, the people in this town would have had you horsewhipped. Oh, wait a minute. I'm no Michelangelo. My paintings aren't that bad. I wasn't thinking of your paintings, Mr. Van Arden. I was thinking of what you did to those poor, unfortunate girls. My dear Miss Standish, they were not poor, unfortunate girls. I paid them, and very well, too. I'm not interested in the details. Whatever the circumstances, you still had no right to send them away. I don't know why not. I was through with them. That's just the kind of answer I expected. It doesn't bother you that one of them is in Kentucky and another on the West Coast? Frankly, no. Well. Well, you two seem to be getting along very nicely. And why not? You have a good deal in common with you, a librarian, and... Mr. Van Arden, an authority on New England history? Mr. Van Arden seems to be an authority on a number of things. There goes the most confusing girl I've ever met in my life. Peter, my boy, when you're my age, you'll begin to realize that all women are confusing. <laughs> sure wish I could get those papers for you, Mr. Van. But they're locked up in Mr. Chadwick's safe. When do you expect him back? Oh, not till this afternoon. I'm sorry, Nathaniel. Looks like we'll have to postpone our visit to the fact today. Oh, it really doesn't matter. I've always known that one horse can run faster than another. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sir. Just a question of which one. <laughs> well, here they are. What do you think of them? Very handsome. Very handsome indeed, especially the coat. He's a nice, rangy-looking fellow. Gentleman's got a good eye for horse flesh, all right. That coat's getting to look more like his brother every day. Running like him, too. Listen, if he's half the horse that habeas corpus is, we'll do all right. Habeas corpus? Mm hmm See, that's quite a hunch for a lawyer. You're not a lawyer by any chance. Yes? Yeah? Mister, that ain't no hunch. That's fate knocking at your door. Habeas corpus is running today. Going after his fourth straight win. Because if he were going to the track, I'd feel tempted to chunk in a little. You don't have to go out to the track. We got a gentleman right here to take care of that for you. Burton around today? Oh, yes. He's over to the tack room, trying to get even on those last three races that habeas corpus won. Come on, Nathaniel. We'll give a little of our business. He was four to five on the morning line. Think he'll go any higher? He's picked on top in every sheet. What do you think, Mac? Oh, hello, Mr. Van Arden. Hi, Odds. I want you to meet a friend of mine, Mr. Wakely. Nathaniel, this is Odds Burton. Hello. Can you handle any more on habeas corpus? Make it easy on yourself. 500 to win. 500 it is. Mose? Oh, I don't indulge, Mr. Odds. You know that. 
I went broke too many times trying to get even for the money I lost trying to get even. <laughs> well, I will admit it's like putting money in the bank. Well, so long, gentlemen. What about your hunch, Nathaniel? Oh, no, I haven't brought much money along. Oh, that's no problem. If I have your address and Mr. Van Arden says you're okay. Oh, he's okay. And the address is Wakely. Yes, but I wouldn't like anybody there to know that I... I understand. Name Wakely? Address Wakely? The town's named after him. Well, in that case, the sky's the limit. There you go, Nathaniel. You're on your own. <laughs> Come on, Moe. How much do you want, Mr. Wakely? Well, uh, would, uh, would five be all right? Certainly, five's fine. Habeas corpus, 500 to win. No! No! No, no! No! And now, racing fans, the feature race of the day, the Chestnut Hill Handicap, six furlongs for three-year-olds and upwards. There are now seven starters who have been scratched because of the sudden downpour. Here they are in the order of their position. You're quite sure that the sloppy track won't hurt his chances? No, sir. That horse got webbed feet. I hope you're right. Believe me, he'll need him in this rain, Nathaniel. It's a lucky thing we didn't go to the track. Mm. And there they go. Maybe his coffin breaks on top. Shelby is second. Barrelhead is third. And pick him up. Now, gentlemen, you can count your winnings. They'll never catch him. In the back stretch, it's Habeas Corpus by two lengths and running easily. Shelby out on the outside is second by a nose. Barrelhead is third by a length, and Pick Him Up is still on the Come line. on, Habeas Corpus. It's still Habeas Corpus by two, Shelby and Barrelhead. Pick Him Up is starting to move on the inside. They're turning for home. It's Habeas Corpus, Shelby and Barrelhead. Barrelhead is dropping back. Pick Him Up is making it. That takes care of him. It's Habeas Corpus, Shelby and Pick Him Up. And Pick Him Up is moving very fast. Into the home stretch. It's Habeas Corpus by a length. Pick Him Up and Shelby. It's Habeas Corpus and Pick Him Up. Go to the whip. I go to the whip. It's Habeas Corpus and Pick Him Up. They're head and head. It's Habeas Corpus and Pick Him Up coming down to the wire. And Pick Him Up wins it by a nose. Habeas Corpus is second by two lengths. And Shelby is third. Can't win them all, I guess. If you ask me, you just can't win them. Cheer up, Nathaniel. There's always tomorrow. Yeah. That's what I'm thinking about. Good morning, Bert. Good morning. Hello. Well, the Reverend Turner sent me part of the pulpit today. Nathaniel. Well, on the contrary, I thought the Reverend Turner was in excellent form. Didn't you, Catherine? Yes, Stuart, excellent. Gee, Reverend Turner really found the pulpit today, didn't he? <laughs> Shall we? I'm certainly glad we didn't have that type of man at Harvard. Reverend Turner? Of course not. The man he spoke about. Can you imagine treating women like that? Sending one wife off to the West Coast and the other to Virginia? Kentucky. Well, that's even worse. Just the same, I think we ought to make allowances for artists. Allowances? And how do we know he's an artist? The Reverend Turner didn't say so. Well, I just meant that anyone who could do such a thing must be an artist. What we think is wrong is acceptable to them. I actually believe you're siding with them, whoever he is. That's the last thing in the world I'd do. Don't they make a charming couple? Hmm? Well, they make a couple. Nathaniel! Oh, uh, excuse me a moment. I'll be back. This fellow here wants to see you about something, Nathaniel. <clears throat> Hello, Mr. Burton. Clarence, this gentleman and I have some private business to talk over. Go ahead and talk. Don't bother me now. I said private. Do you mind leaving? A horse doesn't have to be stepped on to know he's not wanted. I was driving through. Thought I'd save you the trouble of mailing that check. Yes, uh, I'm, I'm a little bit tied up this week, Mr. Burton. Uh, financial investment. Uh, if you could give me a few days. A few days? Uh, yes, possibly a week. You see, Mr. Burton, when I made that bet with you, I didn't mean $500. What I meant... That's the oldest gag in any bookmaker's book. Look, Mr. Wakely, I pay off when I lose, and so do my customers. I'll be coming through in a week. I suggest that you have my check ready by then. Nathaniel, who's your friend? Client, sort of. Drives a fine car. What line's he in? Books. He makes them. 
He wants to discuss an investment. Investment, eh? Well, if you can use any of the services of my bank. Yeah. Come to think of it, I can. Priscilla, why don't you join the younger folks? I want to talk over a little business with Merrill here for, uh, for my client. It's very personal. Well, don't be too long. Come into the office, Merrill. All right, Nathaniel. Now, what's the deal? Merrill, what are the chances of negotiating a loan with your bank? Very good. Good. How much? $500. Only 500? Yeah, that's all. Mm, have your client drop in and see me, and if his credit is satisfactory, I'll make the loan. No, it's not for him, it's for me. For you? Nathaniel, have you been getting yourself into trouble again? Of course not. Then why don't you go to Priscilla? I don't want her to know anything about it. What collateral have you? Just my good word, that's all. Your word is not good enough. Nathaniel, there's your collateral. What do you mean? I'll let you have the money if you'll encourage a certain marriage. Oh, boy, <laughs> you old rascal. <laughs> <laughs> I've had no idea. <laughs> you and Priscilla. <laughs> Don't be an idiot. I mean Catherine and Stuart. I couldn't and I wouldn't do a thing like that. Catherine has every right to choose for herself who she Those wants. Those are my terms. All I have to do is to encourage the match. If you do that, I'll let you have the money immediately. Good. Immediately after Catherine announces her engagement. Oh. Mm. You're not reading that paper, Uncle Nathaniel. Of course I am. You've been on that same page for an hour. What's worrying you this time? You. Me. Sit down, Katie. Catherine, it seems a shame that the long line of Nathaniel should end with me. Oh, is that what's bothering you? Yes, and it should bother you, too. It's time you were married to some fine fellow and had a home of your own, children of your own. And what fine fellow are you referring to? <clears throat> well, I, I had in mind uh, a young man whom you know very well, and uh, a man with whom you spent a good deal of time, uh, Stuart Grumby. Oh, Uncle, you can't be serious. Stuart's very nice, but he's terribly dull. You said so yourself. Yeah, I know, but something happened yesterday that made me change my mind about him. What was it? Horses. Uh, horses? Yes, I found out that he's very kind to horses. And a man who could be kind to a horse would certainly be kind to his wife. <laughs> oh, no, I, I can't go on with it. I can't go on with it. Oh, what's behind all this? Five hundred dollars. Something happened yesterday when you were out with that Peter Van Arden, didn't it? Yes, but it wasn't Peter's fault. All he did was to introduce me to his bookmaker. Oh, I knew it. I knew the moment you left the house yesterday with that man, something terrible would happen. Mm. It did. I accidentally bet $495 more than I intended. And if I don't pay the bookmaker by Sunday next, he'll pay me a visit. I don't have to tell you how your Aunt Priscilla would take that. Well, I still don't see what all this has to do with my marrying Stuart. Bank terms. His father will lend me the money if I encourage the match. But I wouldn't let you marry that stuffed shirt with all the money in his bank. Poor uncle. You are on the spot. Perhaps if I went to see Peter, he... Oh, no. Oh, no. We'll figure out some way. This isn't the first time that you... Wait a minute. Why didn't I think of it before? Oh, Katie, if you could get me out of this predicament. Here, read this. Dear Miss Tanny, she is here to come to find your song entirely delightful. Kind to call it your earliest convenience to discuss publication. <laughs> your sincerely renowned music company. <laughs> this is wonderful, Katie. Well, that's your $500. <laughs> yes. If I can get to New York. Oh, what's stopping you? <laughs> you're going to New York tomorrow. Come on, you're going to go and pack. Oh, but what about Aunt Priscilla? Don't worry, I'll take care of that. And the library. I'll take care of that. Katie, now about the $500. Oh, don't worry. I'll take care of that. <laughs> Uh, to discuss publication. <laughs> oh. 
Peter. <laughs> this is a pleasant surprise. Come in. Thank you. I thought you'd go fishing today. I wish I could. I'm driving New York this afternoon. I just dropped in to say goodbye. Will you be back this way soon? I hope so. Say, Nathaniel, do you think I could see your niece for a minute before I leave? Oh, I... <laughs> I don't think that would be wise. I'll give her a message if you like. She's upstairs packing. Packing? Is she going away? Yeah. She's leaving for New York tomorrow by train. Tomorrow? By train? <laughs> if there's anything I can tell her. Uh, no, no, no. It's not important now. Thanks anyway. It's very nice of you to Well, Nathaniel, where are your manners? Why don't you invite the gentleman in instead of standing here like a pair of hall trees? Unless he's a tradesman. Oh, no, of course, Dr. Sally. He's an old friend. In that case, I'd like to meet him. Uh, yes, uh, Priscilla, <clears throat> allow me to present uh, Mr. Cockerbloom. Delighted to meet you, Miss Wakeley. I didn't quite get the name. Van Arden. Peter Van Arden. How do you do, Mr. Van... January! <laughs> I certainly do. There are plenty of vacant seats in the car. Yes, I know. But this is the only one the draft doesn't hit. <clears throat> Tickets, please. Conductor. Yes, ma'am. Would you kindly move this gentleman to another seat? He's annoying me. It's against the rules of the railroad, mister, to annoy or molest a lady. I'll go quietly. Thank you. Sir. Oh, conductor, the young lady happens to be my wife. Your wife? Yes, you see, I'm taking her to New York to see a specialist. What's wrong with her? It's a very sad story. She used to have these spells at, at rare intervals, but of late they become more frequent. What kind of spells? Oh, she, she forgets things, even the fact that I'm her husband. Thinks I'm a complete stranger. Oh, that isn't... How long do these spells usually last? It depends. Sometimes a few minutes, and sometimes a whole day. Oh, I feel sorry for you, mister. Tell me, is she dangerous when she's having one of these spells? Mm, yes, she, uh, she might do anything. You better come back to set weather. <clears throat> uh, pardon me, ma'am, but I think you'd better let this gentleman sit here with you. Why must I sit with a perfect stranger? The car is practically empty. Now, now, lady, don't excite yourself, but I think it best if you let your husband sit beside you. Husband? Why, I've never seen this person until a few days ago. And what did I catch my little girl doing a couple of days ago? You ran away and jumped in the river. You remember that, don't you, Katie, dear? Of course I remember. I was delivering some books and now, I... Now, dear, you know fish can't read. And for your own good, let your husband sit here. Thank you, Conductor. That's all right. See here, Conductor. Now, now, ma'am, your husband will take care of everything. How dare you tell that man we're married of all the nerve. Darling, don't get excited. Tickets, please. Oh. Conductor? Why don't you relax, lady? Maybe the spell will pass off in a minute. Spell? What did you tell him? I told him the truth. I thought it was best. It certainly is. We're your friends. If you won't make him sit somewhere else, there must be someone on this train who will. No! I told you this might happen. Well, it better not happen again. There's a heavy fine and up to three months in jail for the unauthorized stopping of a train. Ah, you hear that, dear? Well, don't worry, I'll keep my arm around her. Well, you better keep something around her. It's lucky for you, young lady, that you're not mentally responsible. Not mentally responsible. It's all right, folks. Everything's under control. What's mine to do to me, anyway? Thanks to you, he thinks I'm a half-wit. And take your arm away. Now, darling, it's your husband's my duty to keep you out of trouble. Well, you just better see about keeping yourself out of trouble. My employment certificate clearly states that I am unmarried. So it does. Conductor? Go ahead, convince the man that you're in your right mind when you pull the cord. 
a heavy fine and up to three months in jail. Remember? What is it now, lady? What was it you were going to tell the nice man, dear? I just wanted to thank you for your help. Yeah, see? She's all over her spell now, aren't you, sweetheart? Yes. Oh, that's fine. I'm glad to see you two so chummy. That's the way it should be. Thank you, Conductor. Uh -huh. Well, now that we're being so chummy, who is the goop that saw you off on the train? Goop? Uh-uh. The Conductor. He is not a goop. His father owns the biggest bank in this part of the state, and I don't see that it's any concern of yours. Oh, is that so? Well, it's your fault that I cut my vacation short. My fault? When I saw you in the water, I got a wonderful idea for a new picture. I was driving back to New York to get started on it when I heard you were going to be on the train. Mr. Van Arden, I'm not the least bit interested in your personal plans. Oh, but you should be. You see, as long as you were the inspiration, I thought you'd be the perfect model. Are you suggesting that I pose for one of those pictures? I don't know why not. I pay you well. I'm afraid not enough. Furthermore, I'm about to make all the money I need, thank you. A music company is about to publish one of my songs. Oh, really? Oh, congratulations. But if you do change your mind about posing, my number is in the phone book. Calling you, Mr. Van Arden, would be the last thing I'd think of doing. Come to Papa, darling. Here comes the man again. Here. Everything all right? Oh, just great. I made up my mind to marry Mary. She's just as sweet and nice and lovely as can be. We'll both be one neath the sun in the springtime. If Mary makes her mind up that, she will marry me. Well? We can't use it, Eddie. Why not? It's too close to carry me back to old Virginia. What do you mean, close? It's exactly the same. We slip in a few hot licks and nobody notices. Not even Virginia herself. I'd rather work on Chopin. Not again. Well, here goes the piano. Come in. What can we do for you? I'm Catherine Standish. You sent me a letter about publishing my song. Why, of course, Catherine Standish. Oh, won't you sit down, Miss Standish? Thank you. Eddie, uh, Miss Standish wrote that song that you were so crazy about. Uh, what was that title again? Just a little old Cape Cod cottage in a little New England town. That's it, that's the one. You know, we've given a lot of thought to your song, haven't we, Eddie? Oh, yes, a lot of thought. Really? Yes, indeed. And it's our opinion that your song can become a real top tune. Yes, a real top tune. Oh, that's wonderful. Of course, it needs a little fixing. Fixing? Oh, not much. For instance, the title. Well, I thought it was rather cute. Oh, it is cute. But that Cape Cod business, now that wouldn't mean a thing in the West. So we change it to something commercial like uh, a little bungalow in Kokomo. Oh. Or? A little shack in Hackensack. Or maybe we add that south of the border touch to it and call it a cottage dandy by the Rio Grande. Like we said, Eddie, it needs fixing. Well, if I allow you to make a few changes, you'll publish the song? Why, of course. Certainly. Very well. Uh, you realize, of course, Miss Dannis, there'll be a slight fee for rewriting your song. How slight? Oh, not much. Say, uh, $200? Oh, you don't have to pay it all at once. Say, $100 now and $100 when the song is completed. I... Just a second, Miss Standish. Uh, my partner and me, we like to encourage young songwriters. So, as a special concession to you, say, $50 now and 50... I'm sorry I wasted your time. But uh, 25 Good day. Hello. 
Is Mr. Van Arden in, please? Yes, miss. But very busy at work. No can disturb him when he work. Strict rule. Very sorry. Who is it, Lahu? It is the lady, sir. Young or old? Very young lady, sir. And very pretty. Fat or thin? Very thin lady, sir. Then bring her in and feed her. This way, please. That lady, sir. Katie! It's a wonderful surprise. I'm glad you changed your mind. Please don't misunderstand, Mr. Van Arden. I'm here on business. Whatever the reason, I'm glad you're here. Business, huh? Yes. Kathy, that'll be all for today. Well, who give Miss McGannis her full day's pay, will you? Thank you, Mr. Van Arden. Okay, dear. I'm not going to publish your song, huh? Look, you see all these paintings on the wall? My first work and my best. But nobody wanted to buy them. I had to turn to commercial art. Maybe your song's too good for them. They didn't leave me with that impression. You say you came here on business? Suppose I were to change my mind about posing for you. How much? hundred dollars a day. Oh, no, no, I didn't mean about the money. I meant... How much? <laughs> Don't worry about it. You'd be after your neck in lily pads. All right, then I'll do it. I just have to have the money. Someone very dear to me needs it desperately. The goop? Well, of course not. And I told you before, he's not a goop. Okay, it's a deal. Can you start right now? <laughs> I guess so. Lahu? Yes, sir. Will you show Miss Stanish to a dressing room? Katie, you'll find a lot of bathing suits in there. You pick out one you like. This way, miss. This one very, very pretty, boss. What kind of model? Miss Standish is a model of dignity and decorum. Oh. Whatever those are, Mr. Van, she's sure gonna sell plenty of them. Mr. Van Arden. I'm ready. Oh, are you? Don't you think you'd better remove the robe? All right, yell when you're in. A little. I'm not painting the top of your head. Come on, up a little more. A little more. And that's better. Now smile. I can't. Well, force yourself. Much better. Now hold that. I said smile. Peter? As finished as it'll ever be. 
Would you like to see it? Uh-huh. Oh, Peter, it's lovely. I mean, your work, of course. I've got a wonderful idea for another one. We'll start tomorrow. Oh, I'm afraid not, Peter. I'm leaving for Wakeley tonight. Oh, but you can't. I'm afraid I have to. Oh, stay over in the morning. Have dinner with me tonight. Oh, really, Peter? Look, you've been here five days, and you keep refusing to have dinner with me. Why? We've had lunch together every day. Lunch? Hot dogs? Come on, have dinner with me. We'll celebrate finishing the picture. All right. But I'll have to telephone home. They're expecting me. And Peter, mm -hmm. we'll have to go to some small, out-of-the-way place. Katie, wherever we go, you'll be the prettiest girl there. Just because you feel that way, I wish I had something special to wear. When you make a wish like that, you gotta rub a lamp. Oh, Peter, really? Oh, on the level. Now you close your eyes and rub the lamp. Go ahead. Now make a wish. I wish I had something special to wear tonight. For you, Miss Standish. You see my faithful genie. Go ahead and open it. Peter, the one I like so much. A little going away present. Oh, but I can't accept it. You've paid me for my work. I had nothing to do with it. You shouldn't have rubbed the lamp. I'll pick you up at your hotel at 7 o'clock. You sure you don't want any champagne? None for the lady, thanks. Well, how do you like it here? Oh, it's wonderful, Peter. Why, you know, we've even heard of this place in Wakely. But I never dreamed I'd be here. Katie, there are a lot of wonderful places I'd like to take you to New York. I get to stay on. You're forgetting your obligations, aren't you, Peter? Mine? I never take them very seriously anyway. You'll find a shuttle bring your excellent this evening, Mr. Van Arden. Thank you, Pierre. It usually is. Peter. Mm hmm What do your babies look like? Babies? Whatever gave you the idea I had babies? Uncle Nathaniel told me. I was joking. I'm not prying, mind you, but the day that you went on the business trip with him, he said you were going to get some sort of legal papers that would make them yours. Oh, those babies. I'd almost forgotten about them. Forgotten about your own flesh and blood? Now, well, you know how it is. Out of sight, out of mind. You, uh, you wonder what they look like. Well, they've, uh, they've got long, sad faces like this. They might even grow up to look like horses. What? And those are chances a father takes. I don't know how you can talk about them like that, even jokingly. <laughs> look, this gag has gone far enough. Katie, the reason my babies will grow up to look like horses is because they're two of the cutest thoroughbred yearlings you ever saw. You don't expect me to believe that, do you, Peter? On the level. Look, Katie, I'll make a deal with you. You come to my place tomorrow morning for breakfast, and I'll show you their pictures. Also, I'll show you the paper that Uncle Nathaniel was talking about and you can check the date. How's that? Well, if, if that's true, Peter. Katie. The goop. Stuart, what are you doing here? I flew down from Boston to find out what you're doing here. Well, I'm having dinner with Mr. Van Arden. Mr. Van Arden, this is Mr. Grumby. Care to join us? Catherine, you told your aunt you were coming to New York for one day. Here it is, five. Well, I phoned her and told her I'd be home tomorrow. You've been telling her that every day. So I decided it was high time you came home. You decided? Well, I think I'm old enough to decide a few things for myself. She's absolutely right, Mr. Goob. The name is Grumby. Oh, Grumby, excuse me. Listen, Catherine, I don't intend making a public scene by getting involved in an argument. I came down here to take you home. Now, there's a train leaving at 11. I intend to be on it, either with you or without you. Well, then be sure to get a magazine. Then you won't be lonesome. I'll be waiting at the station. You have until 11, Catherine. Oh, the nerve of that goop. <laughs> Katie, you're terrific. I never knew there's so much steam under that iceberg. As long as I can remember, Aunt Priscilla has always told me, you're awakely, Catherine. You mustn't do this. You shouldn't do that. And now, Stuart. Well, from now on, I'm going to do the things I want to do. Starting with champagne.
Nikolahu. This is Van Arden. Boss, be very glad to see you. And Master Peter, how are you? Fine, thank you, Lahu. Is Mr. Van Arden up? Yes, ma'am. He is dressing. Sit down, please. I didn't expect you so early, honey. Irene. Oh, this is a surprise. How are you? I couldn't be better. And how's my favorite nephew? Swell, Uncle Peter. Good. I'm not going to say my how you've grown, but you sure have. Take your coat off and relax. What are you doing in town? And where's that no good brother of mine? Well, Jeff called me from Chicago yesterday. He said he had to come to New York on business, and would I meet him here? So here I am. What time does he get in? About 5.30 this afternoon. Have you had breakfast yet? Oh, not yet. Peter insisted on coming to see you before we went to a hotel. Hotel nothing. You're going to stay right here. Hello? Uncle Peter, may I paint something? Help yourself. There's the paint and brushes. There'll be two more for breakfast. Yes, sir. I've got a young lady coming for breakfast. I hope you don't mind. Well, of course not. Who is she? She's wonderful. Different from any girl I ever met in my life. Well, I've heard you say that before, Peter. This time I mean it. I've heard you say that, too. I'll prove it to you. I just finished a picture of her. Well? From what I can see, I'd say she's quite a dish. How's the rest of her? That I refuse to answer without advice from counsel. You want to freshen up a little before breakfast? Good idea. Petey, there's a bowl of fruit on the table. You can paint it or eat it. In here, then. Good morning, Lahu. You right on time, Miss Standish. Make yourself at home. Excuse, please. Must hurry with breakfast. Hello. Hello. Would you like to pose for me? Are you an artist? Sure. Well, what's your name? Perhaps I've heard of you. Peter Van Orden. Mine is Catherine Stanton. What did you say your name was? Peter Van Orden. Oh, no. Sure. And I suppose you're here to see your father. That's right. We just got in from Louisville, Kentucky. Dad's been away a long time. But now he's coming home. Well... When you see your daddy, you give him this. Oh. And tell him for... No. No, don't tell him anything. Just give him that. Why'd you run out on me? I don't think any explanations are necessary. Well, they are. I don't know what this is all about. Don't you? No. I'm checking every car and every train going to Boston. I barely made this one. Will you please go away and leave me alone? I'm not leaving until I find out what's wrong. I know I can explain. Oh, I'm sure you can. You're very good at explanations. Now, see here, Katie. Will you please go away or must I call the conductor? Suit yourself. Conductor? Excuse me, lady. Did you... You. This man is annoying me. Oh, no, not again. The specialist didn't help, huh? There is nothing wrong with me, and I haven't been to a specialist. Now, lady, don't get excited. Everything will be all right. Just let your husband... I haven't got a husband. The man is right, dear. If you'll just... Oh, no. Oh, not again. I've got my employment certificate. Here, read this. It'll prove that I'm not married and never have been. Now, look, Conductor, this is very... Young lady, pull that cord. Library. One moment, please. For you, Katie. New York calling again. Tell them that. I know. Miss Standish isn't in. You'd think after two weeks that party would take a hint. Wouldn't you? More flowers, Miss Standish. You can keep them. Oh, thanks. Oh, is there any chance of your making up with your fellow in New York? 
I have no fellow in New York. Oh, I'm glad. You see, for the last six weeks now, I've, I've been a big man with my girl, bringing her flowers every Sunday, and well, I was awfully worried. You can stop worrying. You can say what you like, Nathaniel, but if you ought to get fish, there ain't nothing like worms. Them artificial flies ain't worth a hoo. You remember that artist fellow was here two months ago, Van uh, something or other? Van Arden. Yeah, that's it. Supposed to be a great fisherman. But when he really wanted fish, do you think he used them artificial thing with James? No, sir. I used to sneak him a can of fresh worms every morning. <laughs> well, they certainly went for them today. How many did we get, Catherine? Catherine. How many did we get? How many what did we get? Fish, dear. How many fish did we get? Oh, I didn't count them. About 15, I guess. This fishing didn't seem to cheer you up none, Miss Katie. Oh, I'm all right, Clarence. It was fun. What makes you think she needs cheering up? Ain't only me. Lots of folks are saying that Miss Katie ain't been the same since she came back from New York. Who, for instance? Oh, uh, no offense, mind you, but... but... Stop! 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 <laughs> Happens to Betsy. How could he do this to me? Van Arden. Now, where in the world did he get a picture of you? Why, you could sue him for every penny he's got. I'll stop proceedings immediately. No, no, you mustn't. Why not? Nobody can use your picture for advertising without your consent. I posed for that picture. You posed for it? What, Mr. Batson? For goodness sake, child. What made you do an insane thing like that? Well, you... you needed the $500. Then you didn't sell the song. You got it by posing for this. I'm sorry, Catherine. I'm terribly sorry. If I'd known, I would rather face that gambler. A gambler? No, Clarence, please. Now, don't worry about me telling anyone, Miss Katie. I tend to my own geraniums. The question is, what are we going to do about that? If the folks in Wakely ever get a look at it, you'll be in the same boat your Uncle Nathaniel has been in for years. I know. Don't worry, Katie. I got you into this mess, and I'll get you out of it. It's all clear. All clear, Clarence. That's enough, Clarence. He doesn't want to hang in a museum. Wait till I got the eye. Don't think anyone would recognize me now. Not even your Aunt Priscilla. Come on, we've only just started on this smear campaign. This is for Aunt. <laughs> Quite a time for yourselves, haven't you? Don't you worry. Uh, officer, I'm a lawyer. And if you give me a little time to think. As a lawyer, you should know better. As for thinking, you'll have all night for that in the jail at Thornton. Shall we uh, go? Katie did? Katie did? Ah! 
I suppose you heard. I want to see Miss Priscilla immediately. You heard. She's in the parlor. Morning, Priscilla. No sense hiding that paper. I've already seen it. One Wakeley would be dead. But two Wakeleys spending the night in jail like, like common criminals. Bad business, Priscilla. Very bad. Priscilla, we've been friends for a long time. And I believe I can come directly to the point. Yes, madam. First, that episode in New York. Then that disgraceful picture of Catherine plastered all over the country. And now jail, the newspapers, and all this gossip. Are you trying to intimate that my niece is no longer good enough for your son? Oh, no, Priscilla, not at all. But I do feel that we ought to postpone any ideas of marriage. You know the people in Wakeley. They don't forget a thing like this in a hurry. And Miss Stewart coming into the bank with me, well, you understand. How does Stewart feel about it? He said he preferred to discuss it with Catherine, but I'm sure he feels the way I do. Just the same, I hate to see you leave, Katie. I guess librarians and scandal just don't mix, Mr. Pritchard. At least not in Wakeley. Goodbye. I'm sure you'll manage very well. Catherine. I've got to talk to you. It isn't necessary, Stuart. I know exactly what you're going to say. No, I'm not so sure you do. Please, sit down. First of all, Catherine, I don't think this affair is as big and important as a lot of people in this town seem to think it is, including my father. I'm surprised you feel that way, Stuart. Well, I do. Catherine, I know I'm not the romantic type, like, or like this New York artist, for instance, but it doesn't mean that I wouldn't want to be. I know I may be a little stuffy and dull at times, but it's, well, it's this town. It's the way I've been brought up. I know. It's the way we've both been brought up. Yes, ever since I can remember, it's don't forget who you are. The bank. You mustn't this, you mustn't that. It hasn't left as much time for fun. No, and from now on, I'm going to do everything I can to make up for it. Catherine. Katie. I don't care what you've done. I don't care what people are saying about you. I don't even care if the bag goes to pot. I want you to marry me. You're really a very wonderful person, Stuart. I guess I haven't always appreciated it. I'm tremendously fond of you, Katie. Always have been. You know that. I guess in a way I'm fond of you, too. And now, the ring. Abigail, stop sniveling. <laughs> Seems only yesterday that I was holding Catherine on my lap. Stuart will take care of that from now on. I wonder. Now, take the ring in your right hand and repeat after me. Excuse me, please. Excuse me. Stevie Goodrich, I thought you'd be up there pumping the organ. Graham Spiven sent me on a nerve. Hope I'm not too late. Uh-oh. I am. this. I thought this wedding rehearsal was a little gruesome, so I decided to cheer it up. Uncle Nathaniel. I just casually mentioned to him that you were getting married. Who is this man? Peter Van Arden, artist extraordinary. Nathaniel, you did this deliberately. I'd like to have an explanation, Nathaniel. It's very simple, Meryl. You don't like anyone making a mistake in your bank. I don't like anyone making a mistake in my family. Nobody's making a mistake. Uh-uh. I'm not so sure. Katie, my love, surely you're not going through with this hollow mockery. Now, look here, Van Arden. It's all right, Stuart. I'll take care of it. All right, Mr. Van Arden, you've had your little joke. Now, goodbye. Oh, I'm not leaving till I find out why you ran out of my apartment before breakfast. Before breakfast? Mm hmm And little birdie told me you haven't been very happy ever since. The little birdie, huh? 
Your little birdie is all wrong, Mr. Van Arden. Now, would you please get out of here and go on back to your babies? Look, Katie, I told you, the only babies I have are my horses. Well, you forgot to tell one of your babies. He doesn't seem to know he's a horse. I don't know what... Oh, no, not my nephew. Your nephew? My brother's son. Your brother's son? Mm-hmm. Oh, Peter. Nathaniel. Stuart. Catherine. Don't just stand there, Stuart. Do something. Say something. Well, I... I don't think there's much I can say. I understand, Catherine. I... I only wish I could have been the one to put that look in your eyes. This is all very romantic. But, young man, if you have any feeling for my niece at all, you'll get out of town immediately. Aunt Priscilla. Miss Wakey, I happen to be very much in love with your niece. This is not New York, Mr. Bernardin. Nothing like this has ever happened in Wakely. This scandal will ruin Catherine's reputation beyond repair. Miss Wakely, that is ridiculous. I'm afraid she's right, Peter. You don't know the people of this town. Oh, don't I, though? And you say nothing like this has ever happened in this town before? Oh, we'll see. Gather round, folks. Since you're all so interested in choice bits of scandal, I have a beauty. Now, my hobby is New England history, and I've come across a spicy bit of information concerning your precious little town that'll curl your hair. If you're referring to Nathaniel's New York escapades, we know all about them. Oh, small stuff. This goes back even much further to another Nathaniel, Nathaniel B. Wakely, the first. Young man, there's nothing about this town that we don't already know. Oh, isn't it, though? Wait until you read this. <laughs> Uh, allow me, Priscilla. I did some research on this item and found it to be entirely authentic. Uh, according to this, the first Nathaniel Wakeley was never a real minister. He was self-appointed. This is one scandal that the town really hushed up. For you see, if Nathaniel B., the first, were not a real minister, then all your second generation of Wakeleyites happens to bed, say. <laughs> they call me a black sheep. <laughs> Looks like we're all from the same fold. <laughs> now, as far as I'm concerned, this choice historic little gem goes back into the archives whence it came. But if at any time you nice people of this town decide you want to gossip about the future of Mrs. Van Arden, well, <laughs> you understand, I'm sure. Reverend? Happy, Mrs. Van Arden. Happy, Mr. Van Arden. You know, Peter, I was just thinking. It's such a long drive to Niagara Falls. 